it invites the whole cluster you know, of uh, question. questions that arise with the notion of time. And of course, you know, in, in this notion of time, uh, there is a little story at the beginning of the film, if you remember, that was uh, the, uh, the story of the officials coming to gather information on each family in order to, uh, let's say, in order to do a, an official uh, recording or registry of all the people in the village, for example. And here you have the grandma who, uh, when they ask her, how many people live in this house? And, you know, so she at first was very silent. And they said, we are asking you a simple question. How many people live in this house? And then since she was still silent, they would go on and say, uh, suggest to her three. And of course, she would be very offended and say, officer, you should ask me when. You see how precise she is? At the same time, as she is very precise, her time is very fast. Because, as she said, I've been here 50 years in this house. And every year, the, the, the numbers change. So you have people who come and go, people who departed, and people who are leaving, people who return, and so on. You, you have something that is immediately visible, but you also have something that is not visible. So this notion of time that is very vast is not at all a linear notion of time. And this you can link with the way the film begins when I was saying uh, that it was in 1993 and 94. Um, we were there. <laughs> it was very, in a way, very naive to even try to put the date on a material. But I did it you know, in, in a way to provoke uh, something that is so evident, like uh, we were there. Of course, if you see the film, it's partly because we were there. Maybe some people didn't shoot their film, but in, in this instance, you know, the film was shot in the same, uh, same, let's say, same equipment during the whole of the film. And so 1993-94, why? Go back to that, that time. Why is China calling me now? Which is a question that immediately entails, why is China calling me then? You know, why then and why now? Every image, uh, and this I wrote, you know, actually you see an image in uh, a previous film that I made, Forgetting Vietnam, where you see a a child, a, a little girl, looking up, and next to her is written uh, memory of the future. And so first you might say that it's contradictory, memory and future. But <clears throat> actually, every image that you see is a memory. Because by the time that the image comes to the viewer, it is a memory. And by the time that I shot and I edited and so on, it is a memory. Every image, every video film image is a memory. But here is an image of a little girl. And the little girl is like the future of Vietnam at that time. So memory of the future, by the time you know, that you see this future, it's already becoming a present and a future. And so 1993-94 uh, for me is, on the one hand, one way of dealing with, and this, anyone who worked in a political, sensitive political situation knows that you cannot simply show something directly or say something directly. In order to tackle an issue or a problem or a question that is sensitive, you have to go indirectly. So the indirect, you see that in many Chinese films, 
why is it that we have so many gorgeous uh, film from Shanghai made uh, from the always made around the time of 1920s and 30s? You know, because even though in this film you, you may have some political issue, but it is always something that could be treated as remote, and hence it can pass censorship. And in this case, you know, 1993, 94, uh, for someone who is not attentive, of course, you can say, oh, it's some kind of uh, old material, archival material that she's pulling out. But the notion of harmony goes across artistic, social, and spiritual context. And it goes across time, from the ancient to the modern. And we can see that recently, more recently, harmony is a key term in political context in China. So you can see how you can expand, for example, on, on a situation, not by going directly at the but you can go back far in 93, 94, and see how the issues arise, that arise still are very much today's issue. So this is part of the time, you know, that um, Piet was pointing to, you know, the notion of time and history. And as Mao said, right, history is an empty book that is waiting for us to fill it in so that we cannot approach history by saying that this has happened, and this has happened ha after, and this has happened now, or whatever. You know, we cannot approach it in a linear way. On the contrary, one has to approach history in, in its thickness, so that if you talk about 9-11 in the US, you have to think of 9-11. Latin America. We have to think of 9-11 in other parts of the world, and not just, you know, um, just the U.S., for example. This, this is very noticeable when you start looking at films that are made internationally, for example. Remember the film that is made by Attenborough, you know, Richard Attenborough on Gandhi. Well, that film is, um, it's a powerful film, and it's uh, commercially a very viable film. But you can see that the life of Gandhi in that context is very much focused on the individual. Whereas another film made on Gandhi in India is actually five hours long, and it shows the situation in Europe all over the world also, but especially in Europe when Gandhi was um, bringing out, you know, all this <coughs> massive resistance or all this notion of, um, let's say, resistance from uh, something that is very small, very local, very situated. So is at the same time very situated and that is wide, open to the world. This is an example of how a, a subject is being treated in commercial context and in a context where it, 